creepy pair of underwear. Words by Aaron Reynolds, pictures by Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit needed new underwear. On Thursday, Mom took him to the underwear store and grabbed the last three packages of plain white. But as they headed for the checkout, Jasper spotted them. Creepy underwear. So creepy, so comfy. They were glorious. Mom, Mom, can we get these? Jasper pleaded. I think they're a little too creepy, said Mom. They're not creepy, they're cool, said Jasper. I'm not a little bunny anymore. I'm a big rabbit now. Mom agreed to buy one pair. That night, Jasper wore his cool new underwear to bed. Do you want me to leave the hallway light on? Asked Dad. Dad, I'm not a little bunny anymore, said Jasper. I'm a big rabbit now. His dad shut the door. And that's when Jasper noticed the underwear glowed, a ghoulish, greenish glow. He closed his eyes. He pulled up the covers. He buried his face in his pillow, but it didn't help. He could still see that ghoulish, greenish glow. Jasper leaped out of bed and put on a pair of plain white. He stuffed the creepy underwear into the bottom of his laundry hamper. He finally fell asleep. But when he got up the next day, he was wearing the creepy underwear. Jasper threw them into the garbage can. He was still a big rabbit. He wasn't scared or anything, but he was done with scary underwear. After school, Jasper was doing his homework when he heard it. A scratchy, scraping sound coming from his dresser. He opened the drawer and they were back, staring at him with that ghoulish, greenish glow. He snatched the creepy underwear out of the drawer he grabbed a big envelope and some stamps. Bye-bye, scary underwear, he said, dropping the package in the mailbox to China. When he opened the front door the next morning, there they were. And were those chopsticks? His creepy pair of underwear had somehow returned from China and it had brought back souvenirs? Jasper grabbed his mom's good sewing scissors. She didn't like him using them, but this was an underwear emergency. This time, the creepy underwear were gone for good. At bedtime, he slowly opened his underwear drawer. Nothing, just plain white undies. He searched under his bed. He shook out his lampshades. Whew, there was no sign of creepy underwear. He went into the bathroom to comb his ears. They were back! What's the matter with you? His mom asked. You're so jittery lately. Nothing, he yelped. A grown rabbit couldn't be terrified of his underpants. He seized the underwear. He snagged a shovel from the garage and he rode. He didn't stop pedaling until he reached Creek Hanger Hill. 
Jasper began to dig. He dug until his hole was dark and deep and 100% underwear proof. He dropped the underwear in. They gleamed from the bottom that ghoulish greenish glow, but not for long. When he got home, Jasper crept up to his dresser. They couldn't be in there. There was no way, right? He reached for the handle. He peeked in. Nothing, just plain white. Jasper smiled and turned out the light. There was just one problem. It was really dark in there, even for a big rabbit. Jasper turned on the light. He looked at his non-glowy pair of plain white, and he knew what he had to do. The creepy underwear were a little muddy, but they still filled the room with that gentle greenish glow. The next day, Jasper gathered his allowance money and went to the underwear store all by himself, just like a big rabbit. That night, Jasper wasn't scared at all. As he lay down to sleep, he smiled. And so did his underwear, because they had finally found somebody who wasn't scared. of creepy underwear. <laughs> creepy Crayon Words by Aaron Reynolds Pictures by Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit was struggling in school. He was flunking math. He was failing spelling. The only subject he was passing was art. Jasper needed serious help. That's when he found the crayon. It was purple, pointy, and perfect and somehow it looked happy to see him. That night, Jasper knew he had to study for his spelling test, but Tales from the Carrot Patch was on. By the time it was over, he was way too tired to study. The test was a disaster. Jasper couldn't remember how to spell a single word. That's when he noticed something strange. Jasper picked up the crayon. Immediately, he spelled all the words correctly. When he got his test back, he got an A plus and a sticker. The crayon looked pleased. Creepy, but cool. After dinner, Jasper settled into play Bunny Brawl 3. Math homework first, said Dad. Fine, moaned Jasper. That's when he saw it, scrawled in peculiar purple penmanship. Who needs math when you have Bunny Brawl 3? Three hours later, he fell asleep. His game in one hand, the purple crayon in the other. When Mrs. Lopshire announced a surprise math quiz, Jasper panicked. He reached for a pencil, but instead his hand wrapped around the crayon. Suddenly, math seemed easy. He knew when to carry the one, 
He knew when to borrow from the bigger numbers. It was like the crayon knew exactly what to do. After the quiz, he saw it written on his backpack. Jasper plus crayon forever. Jasper felt a shiver go up his spine. The next day was the deadline for the poster contest. Jasper had been working on his entry for weeks. It just needed a few finishing touches. The purple crayon rolled across the table all by itself. But Jasper ignored it. Don't ignore me. He shuddered. He scrubbed the writing off the table. He zipped the crayon into his pencil case. He tried to forget all about the crayon. But when he woke up, his precious artwork was better than ever. It was a horrifying masterpiece in purple. Fantastic work, cried Mr. Hoppypot. You should be very proud. But Jasper didn't feel proud. He felt eked out, freaked out, creeped out. When he got home, Jasper descended into the deepest, darkest corner of his basement. He put the crayon in a dusty box and locked it tight. He went to bed feeling much better. But when he woke up the next day, there on the mirror, you need me. In his pencil case, the creepy crayon. And it looked happy to see him. That day, Jasper got all A pluses. It was terrible. Enough was enough. Jasper snapped the creepy crayon in two. He melted it in the microwave and he threw the mess into the garbage. He drifted to sleep that night, feeling relieved. But when he woke up, there on his wall, it was a mural of him graduating elementary school with straight A's. And worst of all, it was really well drawn. And next to it, the creepy crayon. Purple, pointy, and perfect. All day, no matter what Jasper did, the creepy crayon was there, looking oh so pleased. In his hand, as he aced his vocabulary quiz. In his pocket, as Mrs. Lopshire named Jasper most improved student in the crowd as the school celebrated Jasper in a special assembly. Things were spinning out of control. Jasper couldn't take it anymore. When he got home, he ran straight to the toilet and he threw the crayon in. It just floated there, spinning slowly. It did not look happy to see him. And then Jasper saw it scribbled inside the bowl. Don't you dare. But Jasper dared. That evening, Tales from the Carrot Patch was on, but Jasper studied for his spelling test. His eyes kept darting to his pencil case. No creepy crayon. He flung the toilet lid up. No creepy crayon. 
He got into bed nervously, watching his walls. No creepy crayon. During the test, Jasper spelled ocean wrong, but he spelled courage right. He got a C plus. It was glorious. It wasn't an A, but it was his. He headed home from school that day, finally feeling free. Far, far away was an old sewer pipe. Out and away floated the purple crayon. Slowly, silently, it drifted for days and weeks. One thing was clear. The creepy crayon would never cause trouble ever again. Except that's when Elliot Pelican spotted the creepy crayon. It was purple, pointy, and perfect. And somehow it looked happy to see him. Creepy Carrots, words by Aaron Reynolds, pictures by Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit had a passion for carrots, and the carrots that grew in Krakenhopper Field were the best, fat, crisp, and free for the taking. He pulled some for a morning snack on the way to school. He yanked out a few on his way to Little League practice. He ripped them from the ground on his way home at night. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots. Until they started following him. He first noticed something strange after the big game against the East Valley Hares, Jasper was about to help himself to a victory snack. When he heard it, the soft, sinister tuk, tuk, tuk of carrots creeping. He turned, but there was nothing there. Just my imagination, he thought, but he hopped a little faster. That night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were. Jasper whipped around, but nothing. He laughed at himself, picked his toothbrush off the floor, and went to bed quickly. The next morning, he approached Krakenhopper Field slowly. He reached for two wild carrots. Nothing happened. He bit into one. Nothing happened. Whew, creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. But when he arrived home that evening, Mom! Mom! Jasper screamed. Creepy carrots in the shed! His mom opened the door slowly. There weren't any carrots, not even the regular kind. There are no such thing as creepy carrots, Mom said, shaking her head. Later that night, as Jasper lay in bed, he heard it, breathing, terrible carroty breathing. And there on his wall, creepy carrots, he shouted, dad, dad. 
His dad thumped into his bedroom and threw on the light. They searched under the bed. No creepy carrots. They looked through the closet. No creepy carrots. They opened the dresser drawers. No creepy carrots. Just a bad dream, son, his dad said, shaking his head. Now go to sleep. That wasn't going to happen. By the end of the week, Jasper was seeing creepy carrots creeping everywhere. Jasper knew his parents were wrong. Creepy carrots were real and they were coming for him. But they couldn't get him if they couldn't get out. Jasper hatched a plan. First thing on Saturday, he grabbed supplies and headed to Krakenhopper Field. As the sun finally set across Krakenhopper Field, Jasper Rabbit smiled. On his way home, there was no tuk, tuk, tuk. There were no carrot-shaped shadows. His plan had worked. No creepy carrots would ever get out of that carrot patch again. And as the sun finally set, the carrots of Krakenhopper Field cheered. Their creepy plan had worked. They were sure of it. Jasper Rabbit would never get into that carrot patch ever again.